Welcome to the Knowledge Seeker channel. The channel is dedicated to exploring critical issues in the world. The title of this presentation is The Sources of Ijo Historical Origin. This is the map of Ijo Nation. Ijo Nation is subdivided into three. You have the Eastern Ijo, Central Ijo, and Western Ijo. The Central Ijo land today is known as Baesa State, while the other two sections are part of other states in the Nigerian Federation. Let's briefly look at the Ijo Nation. The Ijo ethnic nationality is one of the most, if not the most ancient ethnic group in the West African region. The Ijo's inhabit an area that could be described as the belly of the Niger Delta as it meets the Atlantic Ocean on the Bight of Borne and the Bight of Benin in the Gulf of Guinea. The Ijo people are concentrated in six states of the country, including Akwaibum, Baesa, Delta, Edo, Ondo, and Rivers. They have related groups in Abia and Imo states. The Izon AB Association of the Washington DC metro area in the USA indicates that there are 58 sub ethnic groups or clans in Ijo land. On the other hand, a book written by A. Z. Ago titled The Ijo Clans of the Niger Delta identified 78 sub ethnic groups or clans. Each sub ethnic group or clan has a unique dialect. In some cases, some have different languages entirely. The Ijos are like amphibious creatures since they make their living around the lands and waterways of the Niger Delta and along the West African Atlantic coastline. Among Nigerians and Sub-Saharan Africans in general, the Ijos seem to feel very comfortable living and walking around Wara. Following one or two of the historical accounts of the group's origin, the Ijos are believed to have extended ethnic relationships with other ethnic groups within and outside Nigeria. The purpose of this presentation is to identify the sources of Ijo historical origin by examining various schools of thought. The task is accomplished by the appraisal of the synoptic historical presentations of various writers. As far as Ijo historical origin is concerned, nine possible schools of thought are identified here. The, one, the first school of thought deals with the North East African origin. The second school of thought deals with the Palestinian Canaanite Israelite connection. The third school of thought deals with the Nupe connection. The fourth school of thought deals with the Benin connection. The fifth school of thought deals with East African and South African connection. The sixth school of thought is a mixture of Asian people as part of the Ijo connection. The seventh school of thought believes that the Niger Delta is the original home of the Ijos. The eighth school of thought uses Ijo language as a basis for establishing Ijo origin. And the ninth school of thought uses the aquatic themes of Ijo masquerade dances and naval warfare to determine Ijo origin. Now, under the first school of thought, the Ijo nation's origin is traced to the Uru and Kumoni people of ancient Egypt, Sudan, around the Nile Valley. The Uru and or Kumoni people are traceable to the Nile Valley civilizations of Kem Ane or Kem Onu and Uru. Under this school of thought, 
the job point of origin is traced to the region around Sudan and Egypt, specifically ancient Nubia, the Nile Delta region known as Peri Ujo. This part of Africa is claimed to be the source of the Urukumoni people because it joined names for God, Tamara, Temono, Aro, Tamuno, Temeno, Temowe, Woyingi, and so forth are similar or believed to be similar to ancient Egyptian names for God or the Supreme Creator or the Supreme Intelligence. Moreover, some tenets and practices of the Ijo Urukari religion are similar to the ancient Egyptian religion. Ijo migratory patterns in the first school of thought can be traced in the following ways. 1. Pockets of isolated Uru Ubo and Efa settlers going back thousands of years existed in the southern Nigerian region after leaving the Nile Valley, that is Egypt, Sudan, Nubia, East and Central African regions. To some of these people, the early Egypt referred to as Urutu, meaning ancient people, Tubutu, meaning those who descended from the sky and Benutu, meaning water people. Then from about 500 CE, an influx of new immigrants often referred to as the Uyelagbo and other Urukumoni people arrived in southern Nigeria. The number of Asian immigrants increased following the Arab invasion of the Nile Valley from about 640 CE. Some of these Asian people settled in the Daima region of the Lake Chad Basin. They migrated from the Lake Chad region to the Benue Niger confluence around Busa, Nupe, and Bara. From the Benue Niger confluence, they moved to Ile Ife, that is Warife, Ademu or Adumu the chief priest of the Wonyingi Supreme Mother Goddess emerged as a major leader of the Kumuni Uru people in the Ileife area. Due to disagreements between the two groups, a war ensured between 650 and 700 CE. Ademu or Adomu, otherwise known as Ududuwa, the Uyelagbo, named for the Supreme Mother Goddess, won the war with the assistance of dissatisfied Uyelagbo people, led by Obameri and other Uru people from the Nupe region. Thereafter, Adumu Oduduwa emerged as the most important political figure among the Uru people. He is credited with establishing the first theocratic state in the Ileife area. To make peace between the two groups and consolidate the political authority of the new state, Adomu or Oduduwa is reported to have married many wives from both the Urukumuni and the Oyelagbo group. The Ijos According to this school of thought, regard Ujo as their collective immediate founding ancestor. If this is the case, it means that Adomu or Tuduwa is also technically associated with the Ijos as well as with the Yorubas. Apart from Ududuwa, several other important personalities also emerged. They included Ujo, Lufon, Ajibota, Nana, Godo or Bagodo. Sometimes they are referred to as Ududuwa's children. Other times they are referred to as his contemporaries or princes. Prince Ujo, a war commander, left Ileife 
and migrated to the Benin region, establishing settlements with its Uru people. At the time, the Benin area was peopled by Uru and Efa people. After camping in the region to consolidate the political control of the area, Ujo left to continue the colonization of the Niger Delta region. He met isolated Uru communities, sometimes referred to as proto ijos and united with them to establish the modern Ijo nation. Thus, Ujo is responsible for causing the differentiation of the Ijo ethnic nationality from other Uru, Kumoni, and Ubo related ethnic groups in southern Nigeria. The original ancestral Ijos, often referred to as Proto Ijos, established Agaragbabo along the Gbedi Creek, Isomabo along the River Non, Opoabo around the same area, Urubiri, Buabo, and Abo. After settling, and consolidating his authority in the central data, Ujo left Agaragba Bo and decided to go back to Otuife. Ujo was accompanied by nine followers and his grandson, Apoi, the son of Kaloku. As they headed back northward, Ife, he became lost and decided to settle at a location on the Non River. They called the settlement Apoi after his grandson. They lived in a section of Apoi known as Okutoaja. Ujo died and was buried at Apoi. Ujo's title, known as Kalasuo, was passed on to his grandson Apoi, the son of Kaloku. Hence, the people of Apoi clan continue to use Kalasuo to refer to their traditional ruler even today. Apart from Bara, Ujo had other children and or associates including Bomo, Asain, Opuogbo, Kalogbo, Opu Okun, Kaloku, Ibi or Obi, Opu, Beni, Kuru, Onya, Tara, Olodi, and Opuru, Uru, Keniopuala, and Tara. These individuals are referred to as primary ancestors of the Joy Nation. The Protoijos, who are of Uru Kumoni origin, are among the earliest settlers of the Niger Delta if not the earliest, and gave birth to the ethnic nation known today as the Ijo, as well as other ethnic groups. The K monarchy is considered as the longest continuously existing monarchy in Nigeria. Professor Stephen Adebanji Akintoye estimates that settlements by various ethnic groups in southern Nigeria took place about 4,000 years ago. Professor Ebiegberi Joe Alagwa, using language as the basis for determining time, argues that the Ijo language has been established in the Niger Delta from between seven to 8,000 years ago. Now, some people do not agree with this first school of thought. For instance, P. A. Lawson, in his The Origin and Genesis of the Ijo People of Western Africa, disagrees with the Egyptian Sudanese source of origin for the Ijo nationality by noting that oral history does not show any Ijo Egyptian connection. He also disagrees with the view that Oduduwa was the father of Perawujo or had any relationship with the Ijo people as described by S.K. Owonaro, since there is no notation in documented history that Oduduwa had any son called 
y yo. He disagrees with Ogunaru's assertion that Perewijo left Ileife in 990 CE to establish Ijo communities, claiming that the Ijo already existed prior to that year. He debunks the idea that Adamu or Oduduwa was the founder of Benin and that the Ijo people ever lived in Benin city nor migrated from there. Instead, he claims that Ijo fishermen and palm oil traders traded in Benin City. He supports his position by citing oral history, narrations, and archaeological excavations carried out in Isoma Bo, Ewoma, Saikiri, Pugu, Ugoluma, Oyoma, and Ke. Now let's look at the second school of thought. The second school of thought proceeds that the Ijos, or at least some of them, came from the ancient Palestinian Canaanite Israelite region of the Middle East. In this case, some Ijos are believed to have been associated with the Jewish city of Ezon or Ijon, which is part of the lost tribes of ancient Israel in Palestine. The other view is that several ancestral Ijos who were Hebrew residents of Upper Egypt fled during the Arab invasion and migrated towards West Africa. Those who support this version of the Ijos origin cite the Ijo word Allah, like Alaba, which in Hebrew is El and among the Canaanites is Al. In each case, the word means God, or Lord, or ruler. You see, that is why sometimes the Jew will say Alaba, Alaire, Alabi, or Alai Owe, and things of that sort. They also cite the Ijo practice of circumcision as evidence it is a fact that almost every Ijo child, both male and female, in some clans, female circumcision is not enforced as strictly as in males, must be circumcised. Traditionally, every male child must be circumcised eight days after birth. Another factor that supports this school of thought is the similarity of a certain religious ritual that Benatari refers to as Levitical priesthood ritual. Yet, another theory of Asian Palestinian Canaanite Israelite origin also noted by Benatare involves the story of an Ijo group known as the Eburu people who settled in Brutu with other Ijo groups. Eburu might be a corrupted form of Hebrew if that is possible. Now, going to the third school of thought. The third school of thought seems to attribute Ijo origin to a district in Nupe. Here, they are associated with the Beni who lived around the Busa and Bara areas of present day Niger state. This account might tie in with the first school of thought in the sense that it proceeds the Ijo moved from the Lake Chad region to the Benwen Niger Confluence before moving to Ileife and finally settling in the Niger Delta. But as will be shown later, Nupe as the source of Ijo origin can only be confirmed if there is a similarity between Ijo and Nupe languages. On the other hand, if there is no similarity between the two languages, then the Ijos might have temporarily settled in the Nupe area prior to moving to the Niger Delta region, if indeed they passed through the Benue Niger Confluence. The fourth school of thought proceeds Benin as the original point of the Ijos 
In this case, the Ijos, like some other ethnic groups in the Niger Delta, are believed to have originated or settled in Benin before migrating to other parts of the region. This account seems partially supportable in the sense that during the Benin Kingdom, several wars of the 15th and 16th centuries, some Ijo groups, namely the Obo Tebe or Yakri, and men are believed to have left the area to join other Ijos in the central delta. The Degama, Epi Atisa, Zarama, and Engeni trace their ancestry to Benin since their language are a doid in nature. On the other hand, the Ogbea seems to have two sources of origin. One theory is that it, the, it originated from Benin, but the second theory is that the Ogbea people originated from the Rio del Rey region of Cameroon, like the Efik, Ebute, Abua, Udwa, Kubo, and so forth, and settled near Andoni area before moving to their present location due to the similarity of the languages. The second theory is growing much stronger, while the Benin theory of, B, of Ogbea origin is getting weaker. And Ogbea is connected to Ijo through one of the Ijo primary ancestors. It should be made clear that there were Ijo groups that had no relationship with Benin at all. Professor Lagwa indicated that the Ijos might have lived in the Niger Delta area going back seven or eight thousand years. The Egbema and Apo Ijos of Edo State are emphatic that they are part of the autochthonous territory of the Apoi whose origin predated human memory and recorded history. The Egbema and Okumu Apoi Ijo position reinforces P.A. Lawson's view of Ijo not being part of or living in Benin. The fifth school of thought attributes Ijo origin to East or South Africa. The East African connection is possible in regard to some Asian Ijo since some groups migrating from North East Africa might have passed through the Southeast African region. Some archaeologists and geologists believe that the Sahara Desert was once a very large lake or body of water. Due to climatic changes, the water evaporated and the desert formed. As the water dried up, ethnic groups that inhabited that part of Africa moved away. Some groups moved downward towards the southeast and southwest region of Africa. It is quite possible that Asian people migrated to the present Niger Delta region of Nigeria by following the Nile River from the northeast and passing through East Africa or the Sahel to get to the Lake Chad Basin. From there, they moved to the Niger Benue Confluence and later to the Ile Ife area and finally spreading throughout southern Nigeria. An American prophet, Edgar Casey, using retrocognition method, predicted that in ancient times, the Nile River used to flow into the Atlantic Ocean through the Congo River, which is very interesting. It is also quite possible that some enjoyed groups of Asian people migrated from East Africa since the region is regarded as the cradle of human existence. Perhaps it is from this perspective that Opubo Benebo reported that some old Ijo families spoke about Ijo Bantus who migrated 
from the Songa Empire and headed southward towards the Niger Delta to settle in Calabare land. The sixth school of thought is a product of the historical view that most ethnic groups in Nigeria are products of ancient African indigenous people who develop into their present form through social fusion. So modern Nigerian ethnic groups are descended from Uru Kumone, the Kwa, and the Bantu. The Kwa is subdivided into the Oyelagbo or Ubo, the Igbo, and the Efa. During the process of migration, the members of the Asian groups intermarried and mingled to produce the existing ethnic groups. In this scenario, the Ijos are viewed as a product of Asian people who develop relationship with other Asian African groups and settle in the Niger Delta. This is a combination of the three earlier accounts in the sense that it proceeds that the Ijo originated from ancient indigenous people and developed relationship with others as they moved from their original homeland to settle in the Niger Delta. The seventh school of thought attributes Ijo origin to the Niger Delta in the sense that the Ijo language is identified with the area for centuries. In this case, the Ijos are intricately identified with the region and not regarded as having migrated from somewhere else. The Ijos of Egbema clan in Edo state, the Ijos of Apoi clan in Ondo state, the late Gloria Adowe, and many others strongly believe that the Ijos are indigenous to the Niger Delta region and did not migrate from anywhere else. The Egbema Ijo of Edo State declared the history of the Ijo in Nigeria, including the Tori Bay Ijo of Edo State, Egbema Ijo in Delta State, and the Arubo Ijo of Ondo State as the aborigines of both the Niger Delta and wherever they are found in the Nigerian Coast Board has never been questioned or disputed. No history or historian has been able to establish that the Ijo of Nigeria migrated from anywhere to the coast which they have been identified with. This is a very strong statement made by the Igbema Ijo of Edo State and it is impressive. This is seconded by the Apo Ijo of Ondo State which wrote the original status of the Ijos in the coastal belt of Nigeria, spanning the present six states of Akwaibum, Rivers, Baesa, Delta, Edo, and Ondo states, is now beyond controversy. While we acknowledge the presence of other tribes, the proponents of this historical account do not seem to accept the Northeast African or Middle Eastern source of Ijo origin. P. A. Lawson, as noted earlier in the discussion of the first school of thought, does not accept that version of Ijo history. He argues that oral history does not make any reference to Egypt as a point of origin. He also does not accept the view that the Ijo originated from Ileife or Benin. Since Ijo's civilization began as a group of independent communities made up of Isomabo, Agadagbabo, Ke, Sugu, Ubiama, Ewama, Saikri, Pugu, Urubiri Bolo, Ikibri, and others. Those who believe that the Ijos are indigenous to the Niger Delta maintain that their presence there is ancient. They further maintain that since the Ijos are indigenous, 
to the region. Their language is unique in comparison to other languages in the region. This is Ijo Sermona Wakenu. This is Ijo again Wakenu, again dealing with the war of the Niger Delta. The eighth school of thought focuses on language as a basis for establishing a joy identity. According to the topology developed by J. H. Greenback in 1963, West African indigenous languages fall into three categories, namely 1. Afro-Asiatic, 2. Nilo-Saharan, and 3. Niger-Congo. The Niger Congo contains the largest group of languages in the African continent. The Ijo language, which is subdivided into Ijo and Defaka, is associated with the Niger Congo, even though it is quite different due to its subject object verb characteristics that are contrary to the noun class characteristics of the Niger Congo group of languages. The Ijo language is traceable to the Ijoid language of the Atlantic Congo, which splits from the Mande Congo and is a subsection of the Kodo Fanian group of languages of the Niger Congo. Jerry Demen Dahl, a linguist, has suggested that the Ijo language should be considered a distinct language and should be separated from the Niger Congo group of languages. He argues that the Ijo language is closely related linguistically to the Dogo and Mande languages and not to any of the Kwa related Nigerian languages, even though the Dogo language falls under the Volta Congo language group. It is strongly believed that the Ijoid and Dongo language groups moved from Sudan as the Sahara began to dry up and this so much earlier than other ethnic groups in Nigeria today. The Dongo people moved toward the south of the bend of the Niger River while the Ijoid group moved towards the confluence of the Niger and Benue rivers. In the process, the Ijoid group split into Ijo and Defaka. The Ijoid group of people later moved to the present Niger Delta region. A version of the history seems to indicate that the Ijo and Dongon ethnic groups are linked to the founders of the ancient Nile Valley civilizations going back to about 10,000 BC. A. On the other hand, the Edo, Igala, Igbo, Isuku, Ishekri, Urubo, and Yoruba languages are associated with the Kwa branch of the Benue Congo group of languages. The importance of this point is that it explains why the Ijo language is quite different from the Edo, Igbo, and Yoruba languages. The difference clearly shows that it is not possible for the Ijos to have originated from the other any groups in southern Nigeria due to lack of resemblance between the languages. This does not mean there are no relationship between the Ijos and the other neighbors in the region. The difference in language between the Ijo and other ethnic groups, particularly Yoruba, means that the Ile Ife and Adumu Oduwa, Oduduwa version of the Ijo history as outlined in the first historical account is debatable. Again, that does not mean there are no relationships between some Ijo groups and the Yorubas. 
if Ujo was a son or an associate of Adomo or Duduwa, then why is Ijo language so different from Yoruba and other neighbors? The ninth school of thought is a continuation of the eighth school of thought with a particular focus on Ijo masquerade dances and naval warfare as a means for differentiating Ijo from other ethnic groups in the western region of Nigeria. The fact that the Ijos have an affinity for aqueous environments is unquestionable, considering that almost all Ijo masquerade dances have themes denoting or relating to water creatures. In particular, the Owu masquerades have water creatures, that is, hippopotamus, crocodiles, shark, shrimps, and various fishes, as the motive of their headgears. The other ethnic groups in southwestern Nigeria do not necessarily engage in such aqueous masquerade dances, except the Shikris. And on the eastern side of Nigeria, you have the Ikweris, which have similar masquerade to that of the Ijos. Apart from the Uwu masquerades, which is based on water themes, the Ijos have a highly institutionalized naval component to their warrior tradition. The Ijos can move about very swiftly around the creeks, lakes, and rivers of the Niger Delta to wage war with ease using the war canoe or Moaro. In fact, during the oil war between 1999 and 210, Ijo youths were able to utilize their prolific marine warfare skills acquired through the war canoe to wage war against the oil companies and the Nigerian military by using motorized speedboats. This exceptional ability to move about the waterways of the Niger Delta and fight using war canoes testifies to the fact that the Ijos have lived in the Niger Delta region for a very long time and have developed aquatic skills that many of their land-based neighbors might not have. Professor Lagwa has noted the oral traditions therefore suggest that the original homes of the Ijo people were deep inside the Niger Delta and the communities moved outwards east, west and north into the rest of the Niger Delta. That means that the Ijos were right deep inside the Niger Delta before they started expanding out. It is apparent that if the Ijos were merely new arrivals, they would not have been able to develop naval skills that enabled them to tempt the aqueous topography of the Niger Delta. The Ijos regard the war canoe as a secret thing that only the spiritually clean members of the ethnic group can participate in. This is a very beautiful Ijo masquerade. This is another beautiful Ijo masquerade. You can see the head mask represents marine animals. Now, let's look at the European views of the Ijo nation. It is interesting to note that the early European visitors and scholars to Ijo land kept referring to the Ijos as the most ancient of the ethnic nationalities in Nigeria. Citing a few examples of their commentary, here will highlight the view of the Ijo being very ancient. A. J. S. Coleman indicated that the Izon nation could be the oldest or most ancient ethnic group in West Africa. B. Wilfred de Hamby noted, beliefs held by the Ijos are of particular interest because 
these people are probably the oldest inhabitants of Nigeria. P. A. Talbot, an acting resident of the Benin Division during the colonial era, referred to the Ijos as these strange people, a survival from the dim past beyond the dawn of history, whose language and customs are distinct from those of their neighbors and without trace of any tradition of time before they were driven southwards into these regions of somber mangrove. J.T. Stride and C. E. Feka also agreed with the characterization of the Ijo nationality as probably the most ancient of the ethnic groups in the region. Professor Alagwa solidified the scholarly perception by writing the Nkoro and Defeka of Upopo Nkoro local government area of River State have lived so long in the eastern extremity of the Niger Delta that their language is now believed to be the oldest living variety of Ijo. Conclusion This presentation attempted to trace the sources of Ijo origin by examining various schools of thought. Nine schools of thought were identified and explained. Having gone through the nine schools of thought, it is concluded that two schools of thought have the strongest evidence supporting Ijo origin. One or A, the first school of thought which indicated a migratory pattern originating from North Africa around the Nubian zones of Egypt and Sudan is very strong. However, the connection to Ududuwa at Ife is weak due to lack of similarity between Yoruba and Ijo languages. The seventh school of thought, which emphasized the Niger Delta as the original home of the Ijos, is also very strong due to the Ijo acclimatization to the topography. This is demonstrated by the following considerations. The fact that the Ijos are very comfortable with the topography by developing masquerade and dance steps that mimic the creatures that inhabit the waterways of the region shows the affinity with the region. Likewise, the highly skilled Wokenu that can move about the waterways of the region with ease and fight also shows that the Jews have been in that region for a long time. There is no other group that is as conversant with the Niger Delta environment as the Ijos. Even most of their deities are associated with the waters of the Niger Delta, so much so that the Jews tend to believe that any outsider who comes into their territory to cause harm shall not succeed. However, their close association with the Niger Delta does not necessarily take away the possibility that they might have arrived there in ancient times, going back thousands of years, as Professor Akitoye and Professor Alagwa indicated earlier. The fact that the first school of thought and the seventh school of thought provided the strongest evidence of Ijo origin. Nevertheless, it is necessary to consider other possibilities. The Ebru story seems to indicate that some Ijos might have migrated from the Israeli-Palestinian region to the Brutu area in Delta State. Opupo Benebo indicated in one of his writings that a group of Bantus migrated from the Songa Empire to join their kin in Calabari land. In this regard, 
there might have been some major connection with the Ife area since it is stated that Ujo attempted to go back there before establishing a base in Apoi where he died and was buried. It seems that some Ijos left the Benin and Wari areas during the Benin civil wars to join other Ijo groups in the central and eastern Ijo land. Of course, the Engeni, Epiatisa, Degama and so forth originated from the Benin region, hence their Eduit languages. The Ogbea, like the Abua and Odua groups might have originated from the Cameroonian region to make it to the Niger Delta. Finally, Constraining the fact that the Ijo nationality is one of the few ethnic groups in Africa that practices ritual acculturation or enculturation indicates advanced progressive political thought. Hence, Professor Alagua seems to believe that the Ijo ethnicity is assuming both linguistic and political variations. This means that a group does not necessarily have to speak one of the Ijo dialects to be considered an Ijo as long as there is a profound blood and cultural relationships. This development is turning the ethnic group into a political and cultural confederation. The Roman Empire practiced this form of granting citizenship to non-Romans. In fact, many of the Roman emperors were actually born outside Rome, but they became Roman citizens. Thus, one would say that more research is needed to continue to uncover historical and archaeological facts about the Ijo origin. In other words, more scholars should get involved in trying to pinpoint the exact point of origin. Thank you for listening to this presentation. Please subscribe to this channel to listen to other interesting presentations. Again, thank you very much to listen to this presentation. Again, thanks.